Hello there everyone, welcome back to my channel, thank you very much for joining me today. And in today's Chaos Roundup for Dissidia, we actually have an awful lot to cover because we've actually got three different Chaoses, and one of those Chaoses actually is technically four different Chaoses. So we have Beatrix's event to rerun for that and the Chaos for it, we've then got the Phoenix Cave event, which has its basic Chaos and then has three other Chaoses on top of it. So I won't make videos for all of the clears for that, but I will make a clear for the first Chaos and then I'll explain what I used for the other three as well. And then we've also got Dimensions N9 on top of that, so we actually have a heck of a lot of ground to cover with this particular video, much more than usual with Chaos Roundup. So if you guys want to see what characters I use, why I use them, how I kind of went about the different mechanics of the fights, and some alternative characters that you might want to use when your own clears and things like that, then stay tuned and keep on watching. Of course, don't forget to check out all of the social media links in the description box below, including Twitter, Discord, and Twitch, where you can also catch uh, the big streams that I'm going to be doing this weekend for Final Fantasy 7 and next weekend for Final Fantasy 14. And if you want to see me clearing these things live, all of the footage that I take for my Chaos Roundups usually comes from my streams. So if you want to see these being cleared live and kind of get involved with it, then definitely check out my Twitch channel and come and follow me on there. And as always, I will always shout out one of my random patrons in order to kind of give a bit of a spotlight to those and say a massive thank you to those people for coming and supporting the channel further. And this time around, that's going to be Mega Matt. So thank you very much for your support. And of course, if you would like to get a bespoke title card just like Mega Matt here has as well for yourself, as well as other benefits, then definitely have a look at my Patreon channel through the link in the description box below. And of course, lastly, don't forget to check out all the other content creators for Opera Omnia as well, because they appreciate all of your attention just as much as me. So the first event that we're going to be going through here is going to be Beatrix's Event Chaos. And the team that I chose to take to this particular event, basically so that I could get as much use out of my Paladin Cecil as physically possible, is Paladin Cecil, Edge, and Beatrix. Now, I was always going to purple Beatrix because she's one of my favourite characters in the franchise, and to be able to use her alongside Paladin Cecil, who is also one of my favourites, and Edge, who complements her so well and has become one of my favourite characters to use in this game, was an absolute pleasure to use. And the reason that they work so well together is that Edge and Beatrix in particular are a defensive powerhouse because you have the dodge mechanics of Edge on top of the HP nullification that Beatrix's EX realization comes with. So between the two of them, it's actually very rare that you take damage pretty much at all. And even if you do, because Cecil's in the party and Beatrix is in the party, your healing is just like, whoop, no, your health just comes back like it's nothing. So honestly, you've got such a defensive powerhouse with these three characters. And each of them actually hit pretty hard as well, so it's not just a defensive thing, they kind of cover all bases, and because of the buffs that Cecil grants to himself, he doesn't interfere with anything that Beatrix does, and equally with Edge, he doesn't really interfere with it either. So these three actually interlink really quite nicely. There is one point in the fight where the two Mariliths, who are very, very fast, love to buff themselves, and just go to town on your characters. If they break you near the end of the fight, they will kill one of your characters. But at one point, they actually like get a near AoE death on me pretty instantaneously. I think one of my characters ends up on 50 HP. But because the healing is so proficient between Holy Flame, the HP regens, and Beatrix is 65, they just get their health back like it was nothing, and then you just go back to dodging, go back to hitting things hard, and then it works out really well. There's the one thing I did want to point out actually, and I didn't actually notice this within the fight, is that Beatrix has a slight bug where if you're equipped with Shiva, which I am here, if you use Saint Cloth while you've got Shiva equipped, you actually delay Beatrix by three turns, which is really quite bad. So I didn't actually notice this because I was streaming at the time and I was talking a lot, but having used Saint Cloth, there is a point in this fight where Beatrix doesn't get a turn for a very long time. So do bear that in mind if you're thinking of taking Beatrix and Shiva into a fight. The developers do know about this bug and I'm sure they're going to fix it very soon, but for the time being, just be very, very careful. But Cecil, not only does he bring the defensive auras, the, um, the additional healing, things like that, but he also provides a source of Imperil and Enchant which, well, more likely the Imperil, so that he's still able to hit really quite hard because the Imperil affects him. It doesn't really affect the other two because both of them use thunder attacks more often than not, but it does, I mean, occasionally it does help, like, if you're about to you do a big Klim Hazard or something off of Beatrix, because that's non-elemental, so it's then affected by the Light Enchant, so that works out really nicely, but honestly, Cecil is one of my favourite characters to use right now. He just does a little bit of everything, but he does it all really well. With regards to the enemies themselves, the, 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 the first wave is realistically nothing to really worry about. It's just a single enemy. 
you just as long as you keep your you know stats up, as long as you keep your breaks, you keep yourself from getting broken, as long as you keep a constant amount of pressure on the enemy. The Omega doesn't really do an awful lot, so don't worry about that. But the Maroliths do like to just buff themselves up to like to hell and back, and then from that point just go in and in and in and in, and they're very very fast. So the reason that I've taken such a defensive based team is so that that doesn't overwhelm me. As a matter of fact, Beatrix's Saint Cloth and Cecil's defensive auras on top of each other, they do actually make a huge difference when it comes to the like amount of damage that you take. Equal if you have a carriage that has an attack down on them, so like Vanille or Steiner or something like that, there's going to be a lot of times where you're just taking ones or even zeros from these enemies. So there's a lot of characters that you can use for this, but if you have access to somebody like that, then they will do you very well if you're using them in conjunction with Beatrix. In terms of alternative characters, obviously there are going to be very, very powerful characters like Vayne and Aranea that are going to do you very, very well here. Ishtola, equally, you could build a team around like Delay and Rebreak, things like that, because they're just going to do very well like they do in every Chaos event at the moment. People like say that Aranea is a bit of an easy button, and she kind of is. Vayne is equally like really, really strong and has the longevity, though he is generally better at focusing a single target than Aranea is, whereas Aranea is really strong in multiple enemies fights because her damage output is just that high with things like high boost lance and high wind and air superiority. Her high, high damage output is practically unparalleled in conjunction with the other mechanics that she brings. So if you have Aranea, there's no reason why you couldn't bring her to this. As I said, if you have a character that has an attack down debuff like Vanil or Faris, or Steiner, who is obviously another synergy character, the other synergy characters here, they're going to do really, really well as well, especially if you can dispel on top of it, because while the Marilith's buffs aren't framed, and you can just kind of overwhelm them with debuffs of your own, if you can just eliminate them all altogether, then it's going to do you really, really well. I've seen a lot of people use um, Kryle in conjunction with uh, Beatrix and Edge, because both of those are Thunder-based characters, and because Beatrix brings HP regens and a bit of healing in her kit, it kind of makes up for the fact that Kryle doesn't, but Kryle equally has these amazing brave batteries that she brings. She has the um, Thunder in Peril from her EX, she has the weakness damage up, she can bring extra buffs so that Beatrix doesn't get too like get too overwhelmed, but they, you know, they work they do work really well, just be careful of overlapping buffs depending on who else you bring with them. And then I've also seen a lot of people use Ultimecia, which would which works, but I think Ultimecia's damage output is a little bit low at this point but she does still work really well for multiple multiple enemy boss fights, so she's somebody you can consider. And then equally, there are plenty of other really great characters you could bring. Zack is another example. If he's getting focused down and you have characters that have a defense buff or something like that to make it so that the enemies are dealing less damage or somebody that can boost the initial bravery of Zack, which means makes his shield bigger, then he's just, because the way the Marilith's attacks work and they're just going in like repeatedly over and over and over again, with loads of smaller attacks, then Zack's just not going to take any damage. And he's so self-sufficient with healing and things like that, then he's definitely a character that you could consider as well.
So when it comes to you doing the Phoenix Chaos, I actually had to try this a couple of times because I actually already have Selfie EX, but I didn't want to invest ingots into Selfie because I've been saving them for other characters. So I decided to try and take Edge, Selfie and uh, Cryol along to see how that went. And it didn't work all that well because the damage output just wasn't there because Cryol's damage output isn't that great. Edge's is pretty good, but it's not amazing. And then Selfie's damage output is practically non-existent. You're there for Aura. And so it just didn't really work out. So the Dame I decided to bring with me instead, I went with Emperor, Vayne, and Ishtola. Now, Emperor actually did very, very well in this fight because of the first damn wave. These moths that originate from uh, Renoa's event are so irritating, it's unreal, because they're so damn fast. But Thundercrest, Dreary Cell work brilliantly on these guys because they get their turns so frequently, they're tra the, the traps are going to be going off all the time. Faris is a character you could also bring to something like this as well, and she'd work with a Whirlpool as well because they get their turns so frequently. Whirlpool is just going to keep battering you, things like that. But I just decided to use Emperor because even during the single waves, he's a lot more useful because he can present framed debuff defense drops while still presenting a decent amount of damage, making sure that they don't sort of overwhelm you, and even if they get a large amount of bravery, it definitely gets shrunk a lot by Dreary Cell or even just the regular traps. It works, he worked really, really well, and he's a very easy unit to switch out for an Aranea friend, or if you have an Emperor friend, you could easily switch one of your other characters out for an Emperor friend, and then suddenly your damage output skyrockets. So, you, you know, Emperor was somebody that I really, really enjoyed using in this particular fight. And then I went with Vayne and Ishtola because they're just good. <laughs> they're just good. You could have easily put in Aranea at any point in this fight, but in fact, Aranea is probably better than Vayne at this particular fight just because that first wave is that damn annoying. But if you can get past the speed of the first wave, the second wave isn't nearly as big a deal. The Plague Dragon, it's annoying, and if it gets the buffs, on, like the debuffs on you, then it can be a bit of a struggle because its attack down debuff does last quite a long time. So if you can find ways of getting around that, then it will help you quite a lot. But with Vayne, I, I thought, well, you know, I'll just beat my way through it because he minces through turns so quickly. Not only do buffs like kind of fall off him really fast, but debuffs fall off of him really fast as well. So I thought that that would be a really good way to get around that. And then Emperor doesn't really rely on just brave shave damage anyway. He's just going in with traps, defense drops, debuffs, things like that, and it worked really well. And then Ishtola equally anything that they throw at you you can kind of just go pulse of life all sorted she has delay that compounds well with vein she has defense drops with stone that, that also compound well with emperor so basically it just i was trying to just cover all bases with this because it is a long fight a lot of these enemies have a lot of health and phoenix in particular because you have to kill it twice it's such a pain in the backside you have to also be prepared for the large amount of hp attacks that he's going to throw at you he opens the fight with Magma Wave. He does the, the horrible debuff where you're losing HP and bravery every turn. And there are times like, I mean, Vayne is very good at this because he can drain through that debuff really quickly and then Ishtola can just pulse of life and get rid of it all again. But if you're not taking characters like that, then that debuff can be really vicious if you let it be. So just try to make sure that you've got a way of getting around that, whether it's an HP regen or a character like Vayne who can just get through his get through the debuff really quickly. There's it's definitely something that's important. And when you kill the Phoenix for the first time, please bear in mind and don't forget that it comes back with Flames of Rebirth, which is an AoE brave attack. Make sure your other two characters have bravery, ideally all three characters, have bravery when you actually kill the Phoenix for the first time, otherwise it's gonna be a problem. I saved my friend unit and my summon for like the latter half of the Phoenix part of the fight, as most people do with their summons. Like most people will save their summon and their friend unit just to kind of finish and burst down a fight like at the last minute and I definitely did that here and with the other three versions of this fight. Before I go into like any other characters that you could use for this I will talk about like who I used for the other three chaos fights here because the chaos fights after this one and it's great that they did this because it was a nice source of extra nuggets towards ingots for us but they restricted you to red and black characters so you had to take a red character, a red crystal character, a black crystal character and then a third character of your choice and then yellow and green, and then blue and white. So I took Aranea as my third character for each one of them, because quite honestly, if you're gonna make me farm 
the same Chaos fight four times, I'm going to make it as easy for myself as possible after the first one. So I took Aranea, Beatrix, and Zack for the first time, which was with the red and black characters, and th that actually went really, really smoothly. And with these fights, it's not quite so bad because there's no turn count, there's no HP requirement. You just have to worry about the score and not dying, so it's not nearly as bad as the regular Chaos fight. Um, so Beatrix, Zack, and Aranea work really well just because AoE damage through the nose, lots of defenses. Beatrix and Zack actually work very well together and I really enjoyed using those. Yellow and green, I took Aranea, Ishtola, and Altamesia, and this one was actually a little bit harder. Altamesia just, she's great for the first fight, but for the second and third, I found that she ran out of steam really quickly, and I think we're finally getting to a point where Altamesia is not quite as OP as she was. She's still really good, but there are times where she's like, oh my god, like, can you just do a little bit more damage, please? Because her Brave Overflow is very low. Her actual damage output to single target enemies is also very low. So if you have an alternative green character, maybe consider that. I probably could have taken Agrius for this fight instead of Ultimisia, and it probably would have been easier. And then for blue, blue and white was easy. I took Vayne, I took Arane, and I took Pinello, and everything was fine. Just delay the heck out of it. I still had skill uses at the end of it with Arane and Vayne, and that went really, really, really well. It's quite difficult to talk about alternative characters for these particular fights because it all depends on which characters you actually have access to within those colours because the restrictions are there for the extra three fights. But for the main Chaos fight, I mean, Dark Knight Cecil, we can't not talk about his early rework. I think that his early rework definitely was a welcome surprise. And as somebody who loves Cecil, I was very tempted to ink at him, but I really, really can't expend the resources to do it. So he's a really strong character, but he's also a very slow character. So you just have to kind of make sure you build around him. Like I've seen people use like Dark Knight, Cecil and Gold Bears together and it worked really well. But because of the Dark Imperils and things like that, and basically the best thing to do is to treat Cecil as a launch slash Imperil character and that works really well. And for obvious reasons for synergy, things like that, he's obviously going to do very well in this fight, particularly against a single target. And for the same reason as that, characters like Tifa and Lael will work. Because you just got to make sure that you're finding ways to deal as much damage as physically possible in a short space of time. Selfie is a fine character to take. She is actually very good, but I just decided to go with her with just a book. And it wasn't nearly enough. Like, the damage output wasn't there. If you are going to take Selfie, make sure the other two characters you're taking can deal a large amount of damage to make up for the fact that Selfie really can't. And then, if you wanted to take a different support character, Rosa would work well. Basically, the characters that are generically good will work very well for this fight, but it's quite difficult to give too much advice in terms of the restricted Chaos fights, because it all depends on what characters you have available to you. But just bear in mind that because the turn count isn't there, because the HP requirement isn't there, the only thing you have to worry about is the score and not dying. So if you've got characters that are able to keep you alive, characters that are able to deal a large chunk of damage, and a character that has some sort of support capability, you usually find, like, like I said, I, I spoke about the different parties that I used there, but there are loads of other characters that you could use, and I was coming up with like alternatives in my head for my own clears, like, instead of Artemisia, I could have used Agrius, because that would have been more HP regen, more brave regen, more utility, slightly more sort of, like, I mean, the Paralysis would have been nice, she'd have been great for this fight, and there's a lot of, like, characters that are available to us as well because of the banners that are available. There's no synergy for this fight, so that's something to take into account as well. But it's just, it's an awkward fight because of the restrictions and things like that. But for the main Chaos fight, just bring the best characters you have.
Now lastly, I'm going to talk about Dimensions and Entropy Tier, tier 9. Now, while there are a lot of characters that you can use for this, I chose to use Rosa, Cecil and Beatrix. Now honestly, this party I would use for a lot of things because it actually works really quite well. Cecil and Rosa are like, as they should be considering their lore, they're like peas in a pod. They work fantastically together. Cecil can enchant Rosa so she actually does a half decent amount of damage. The auras that come off of both Rosa and Cecil are absolutely fantastic. Cecil deals a consistent stream of damage and his HP plus is really strong. He just, they, they both work so well together and their longevity is absolutely fantastic. And I really like using these two. And then Beatrix, because the other two characters are aura based primarily and Cecil only really buffs himself or leaves buffs on himself, they don't interfere with Beatrix. Like Beatrix will put three or four buffs on every character and extra ones on herself, but it doesn't matter hugely because the only things that are ever gonna get pushed off they're not going to happen because because Rosa will have re-raise and Rosa's prayer, so she only really puts a re-raise on the other two, and then Cecil's sort of fra like framed buffs are on himself, so then Beatrix can do whatever she wants, and then Beatrix in this fight worked really really well because of the defensive capability she has. All three of these characters can heal and heal a lot, and it's really useful because these enemies love to throw out HP attacks, and a lot of them, and they really hurt if you're not careful. As a matter of fact, in the third wave, you will see there's a jump cut between the second and third wave, and that's because I had to reset twice due to silly mistakes. And the biggest thing I can say to you when it comes to this fight is do not let the enemies break you. Just don't do it. Because if they break you, they either come back or like with a turn immediately after. This is particularly paramount in waves two and three. The ogre, if it breaks you, will start hitting much, much harder. If you're, if you're in wave three, then the Phantom Knight, I mean, the Phantom Knights are always some of the most irritating enemies to fight because of their hidden turn order. Just do what you can to be safe in these fights, but equally you do still have to be dealing damage where possible because there's a turn count on these things and you have to be careful. So just be mindful of not getting broken too often, if at all. I get broken quite a lot in this fight, but they're at least somewhat strategically placed the reason that Beatrix works so well here is because there's quite a few enemies in this fight that have delay mechanics, and if they're targeting Beatrix, you can actually take advantage of that, because if she has her Holy Paladin's protection up that comes from her EX, that makes it so you don't take any HP damage at all, then if they're delaying her, you're like, that's fine, because now I'm not taking HP damage for longer, and she's going to last that much longer. So, when it came to wave three, honestly just focus down the knight as much as you can because that's the one that's gonna really bother you. But don't ignore the golem's delay mechanics either because it uses stone, stone era, it uses all kinds of delay and you really don't want that to affect the wrong character too heavily. With wave one and two, the best thing I would suggest is to be mindful of the fact that the death knights and the worm can heal themselves and they have HP regens and things like that. You do not want these fights to last any longer than they have to, so you want to make sure you're focusing the worm down at the very least. The Death Knights aren't quite so bad because they don't have that much health compared to the other enemies, but you do want to be making sure that while you're attacking the Berserker, you are keeping the Death Knights in mind. So I liked the fact that Rosa and Cecil both had like splash damage EXs and things like that, and Holy Flame was AoE when I needed it to be, Luminous Blast deals some splash damage, it's nice to have splash damage on those particular enemies so that you can focus the Berserker down because, again, it's got that horrible thing where you don't know who it's attacking. So the lack of knowledge is your worst enemy in this fight, so try to make up for that by being as safe as you physically can. In terms of alternative characters for Dimensions and Entropy 9, there's actually a lot of nice options that you have for you. And honestly, Dimensions and 9 is probably one of the slightly easier tiers to tackle than some of the others because it's quite simple in what sort of things you have to bring with you as long as you bring some sort of way to deal damage that doesn't involve defense down then you can deal the damage and you want to bring some sort of defensive countermeasures to the things that your opponents can do i brought quite a few with me because all three of my characters could heal all three of my characters can battery and the damage output may be ever so slightly lower than certain characters but the damage output is still there so i found these three to be really quite strong 
you could easily take Vayne to this fight if you haven't used him in any other. I chose not to use Vayne because I'd like to save him for Dimensions N10 because he's very, very strong in that particular fight as well. But Vayne will do a lot of work here. He's it, like, if you've got rebreaks, you've got turn manipulation. Turn manipulation is always powerful, just no matter what. And if he can focus down the the knight in Wave Three, then you have to, you don't have to worry about him coming out of nowhere and blitzing you quite as often. And that's always very, very nice to bear in mind. Equally, Aranea. Aranea is probably the best character to take to this, like without a shadow of a doubt. Because she has the rebreak, she has massive AoE damage, she has the mechanics, she has Vital Crusher, which means that it's a defense down that's not a defense down because the crit damage is increased. She's got practically everything that you could want for this fight. So if you're planning on bringing Aranea, you might want to consider Irvin, because Irvin has the range resist down that makes Aranea even more powerful and can boost himself. So, I mean, a really great team that you could bring with you would be Rosa, Irvin, and Aranea. That team is going to be absolutely filthy to get around. Because you've got the auras, you've got the recovery, you've got healing from two different party from two different party members, and then you've got Aranea being well, Aranea. Other characters that I've seen do really well because of their like AOE damage and their imperils are Lana and Rain. I've seen used a lot in various different video clears for this particular event because of their 100% AOE damage. There is always more than one enemy in these waves, so they are going to be really strong for this. And then you've also got Shantotto, which I've seen used multiple times as well, alongside characters like Beatrix, because. You don't necessarily want to bring a character like Kryle, but you could because you've got Beatrix who has the other parts of the defenses covered. So as long as you've got a character that can bring the Thunder in peril, whether it be Shantotto or Kryle or someone else like that, then they're going to work really well. Similarly, Edge. For the same reason that I took Edge and Beatrix for her Chaos, they could work very, very well here because you've got that kind of leapfrogging defensive capabilities between Edge's dodges and Beatrix's HP nullification so that you've got that leapfrogging defense and because Beatrix and Edge's damage are actually pretty good you don't have to worry so much about damage but definitely Shantotto would be a great character to take along the side of those two in fact I've seen a, a, a clear for those three characters from a fellow a content creator Amaterasu I believe did it and then it was just really strong so there's a lot of characters that you can take to that honestly as long as you've got an alternative method of lowering your, lowering your opponent's defenses and a way to capitalize on it whilst keeping your party safe, that's gonna be the best way you have of dealing with Dimensions M9. So that's going to be it for Chaos Roundup this week. There's actually was a lot to cover in just a week. I think next week actually all we have is uh, the new story chapter with General Leo and Galoof spanners and things like that. So you can look forward to that on Monday in terms of what sort of things we're gonna be talking about or if there's any other events and things that we can have a look at what's going to be happening next week. Do check out the last video I made as well with some tips and tricks and general life hacks for any any Opera Omnia player that I hope has been useful to anyone from any skill level, whether it be beginner or veteran or anywhere in between. So I hope that that's been useful to you. And I hope that these clears have been useful to you as well. Let me know in the comments below who you used to clear all these different events and which characters you felt worked and maybe which ones you could have changed out and done differently or any bits of advice that you have for other players because that's what this channel is all about, is helping each other kind of get through some of these events and get all the resources that we need. Anyways, thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click that bell for notifications on any future videos. And of course, don't forget to come and find me on Twitch where on Saturday I'll be streaming Final Fantasy VII for 12 hours straight and there'll be lots of fun things to be had there as well. Thanks ever so much guys and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.